Look, they have television at night for the homeless. Hey yo, Dave 46 again, once again, and once again, right? No, uh, well, kind of, because at the end of the last video, whatever. It's me, Gazbot. I'm here. I'm wearing my Dino Charge shirt, sort of pure Uger is the Japanese. It's the, that's like their costume, right? It's a costume shirt. I'm a big fan of costume shirts. Like when you see the Superman logo as opposed to a picture of Superman, um, I think because it's less subjective in what the art is and the rendering is, it's like, this is the logo. This is what they wear. This is the uniform. And also because I fancy myself a superhero. So I like it when it's like, oh yeah, what? I'm Dino Charge, right? That's why I wear this shirt. You know, not, oh, I'm not a fan of the Power Ranger Dino Charge team. I'm on the team. Delusions aside. <laughs> Why I'm here, it's probably gonna be a short video. I have friends in from out of town. As I've talked about before, uh, Q and I ran around doing house stuff, which was good. Um, and the friends came in, and then we went and did friend things, like going out to eat and getting ice cream. I got ice cream. Uh, let me put this up. We You'll notice I was pointing to a specific flavor, the flavor being Earl Grey tea. Now, I love Earl Grey tea ever since Star Trek The Next Generation and Captain Picard told me it was a thing. So, I drink Earl Grey tea. Uh, I ended up tasting it. It kind of tasted like Earl Grey tea. Didn't seem like a great ice cream flavor. So, instead, I got, like, it was like salted butterscotch and, and birthday cake. And it sort of like, th this place was sort of like a upscale Cold Stone, if you've ever been to Cold Stone. It, it had less flavors, but they were more diverse. And then I got, like, gooey brownie tops, and it was crazy. I loved it. But got home, did some more socializing, and said, Hey, man, Gazbot man, I haven't done any drawing. Well, that's okay. It's a Saturday, and none of my deadlines are coming up on Monday. Yeah, but 30 minutes a day, working on the Horror Ray 4, remember? Your own personal kaiju comic that you own? Creator-owned? Yeah, well, I finished issue one. Issue two! Issue two isn't done! You need to go to work on that. Even if you never intend on finishing it, which is not acceptable, you owe yourself and the people 30 minutes a day. All right. Aha! I've already done that. Now, a minute ago, well, a few minutes ago, I probably did more than 30 minutes, 45, maybe close to an hour. Disappointing, though, because when I show you what I've done, it won't seem like that long. Bingo! Still working on the roughs for page five uh, of the horror A4 issue number two. Do, do, do. I'll repeat myself. Basically, I did this exterior shot of Dan's bar, which is a location that we first saw in the first issue. Um, but it, there's no, there's going to be dialogue over it. There's not a lot of characters. I put a little cat looking just to make it a little bit more interesting. And I put it at kind of an up angle, which I kind of had difficulty with. Like two things I was contending with. I'm going to pan up a little bit. This is a page I pulled up from issue one. So you can see this is the fully rendered and shaded bar. Um, but it was more of a straight on shot. Whereas this one, coming back down, I tried to do a little bit of an up angle. Almost like a point of view of the cat. Uh, and because of that, all of this stuff is not in proper perspective kind of looks like it works. I'll see how bad I think it is when I go into the inks, but like this stuff is all in proper two points perspective and everything from here down is not except for uh, maybe the cat. Um, so that was the two things I contend with matching the reference and getting that correct. And that took me quite a while. However, I am satisfied with where I got and it was one of the harder panels. So fine. That means I have two more panels on this page and I still got to go back and do that last panel. So three panels, I'll be done with these two pages in this part of it anyway, which, you know, I did a question and answer like two episodes ago about how many pages I can get done in a day. And I realized part of the reason that question is a little difficult for me to answer is because I almost never sit down and start a page and draw it till it's done. That's just not how I work anymore. I've done it in my life. I script, finish the whole script. Then I thumbnail, like not like this, but like the really rough thumbnails, whole thing through. Then I go in and do the roughs, whole thing through. Then I'll go back in and ink it, whole thing through. Then I'll do some grays, whole thing, you know, so... I can estimate that, you know, it'll probably take me a day to do a whole thing from beginning to end, but I just don't work that way. It's more like in a day, how many pages can I thumbnail? How many pages can I rough? How many pages can I ink? Um, which still isn't as quick as I'd like to be, but it, you see what I mean? I break it down production style and I feel like that really helps me. Uh, helps me stay on target, helps me focus because I don't feel as precious with it where I have to get it perfect this time because I know I got at least two more passes to go. So I still do my best to get it in good shape. But there's not as much pressure. Uh, also, it's a problem for future Gaz. Present Gaz does his best to set him up, but future Gaz has to deal with that. Here's the thing. Future Gaz is a better artist than I am because he's done way more pages of roughs. Way more, he's already inked a couple pages before he gets to this one. Future Gaz is a better artist because I work this way. Now, if Future Gaz was just tomorrow I finish up the roughs and the next day I ink it, slightly better, but not like days, weeks, pages better. So I'm sort of 
I, I'm kind of saying this out loud. It's something I've thought for a while, but I'm kind of saying it out loud and saying it to you that by doing it this way, I'm always setting myself up to be a better artist when I work on the next phase. And it also, I think, helps consistency. Because I've worked on books where I, you know, went beginning to end each page. And by the time I get to page 10, 11, page one looks like a different artist drew it. It looks, the styles have changed, the, the characters are more inconsistent. And this is stuff I struggle with even with the process I have. But at the very least, when I get to page one and start doing the inks, I will have at least roughly drawn the whole book. And maybe I'll go, oh, you know what? I kind of changed the way I was drawing this person's hair. Or I figured out a better way to do perspective on the foot. Or whatever the thing is. So that... Probably the final pages will still be better art than the first couple pages, but not as drastically, not as horribly noticeably. And that's my tip of the day. For me, it might not work for you. I find it works. And it also, again, I don't get as burnt out of like, oh man, I've been working for days and I've, I've got a page done. It's like I've been working for days and I made more progress in the book overall. I can see the book beginning to end right now. And I just, it, instead of like being a line of like, let me get a little further, it's like, boom, here's the big picture. And then I'm constantly focusing in on it. I'm constantly adjusting the rendering. I'm constantly getting the resolution up until I get to the end and it's perfectly crystal clear. And then I'm done. On to the next issue. That's how I feel right now anyway. Um, oh, the last one, I was talking about an Eric Larson story and I lost that and got cut off and then I quick finished the video. Um, and I didn't remember what I was talking about, but somebody in the comments... Um, Drug zoo? That's not right. Junkie Ward! Yes, that's right. Calling me out wanting to know the Eric Larson story, which is not terribly exciting, but I will finish it. Uh, what I was talking about, it wasn't like, it wasn't even really about Eric Larson. Well, I guess it was about his art style and his art technique. I had met him at a con, I believe it was an image con uh, that they had over in Oakland, which is a little bit north of me here in California, in the Bay Area. Uh, and they've done a few since then, and I think they're more press based or more traditional, whatever, but this was just sort of like, it felt like a fans con, like they had a couple, you know, news reporters and stuff, but like you could buy tickets like anyone else. And it was a really a great con. It was small. It was only image creators and they had panels. And I was in a room with like, you know, Mark Silvestri or Will Sportaccio or all these big 90s names with like 15, 20 other people had my art critiqued in front of people. It felt like having a class with them a little bit. And then on the show floor, there were people selling stuff. But again, people like Eric Larson just sitting there at his table with nobody mobbing him. And, you know, so it was cool. And, and I, I was talking to him about art. And I was asking him about, I was saying how I had trouble with perspective, which I still do. And I was, you, you know, I've had this, I have actually talked to him twice about perspective because he always seems to have a, a an effortless handle on it. Like, I don't want to, I don't seek to emulate his style, but I respect it. And he comes from a line, a, a lineage that seems to be similar to Walt Simonson, another artist I like, but I don't seek to necessarily emulate. And they both seem to come from someone like Jack Kirby, which is a very bombastic sort of extra cartoony. I mean, I'm cartoony for a comic book artist, but even more than me and very big, bold lines and strident action moves and things. Um, and so I was saying, you know, I, I kind of understand perspective. I mean, I still struggle with it, but I understand you have a horizon line, you have vanishing points, you put one above, one below, blah, blah, blah. You know, I get the basic technical thing of it. And if I'm drawing a building, I could do it in perspective. When I have trouble is getting people in perspective, getting, you know, other more organic things, and more importantly, placing them on the page. Now, I even understand a, a lot of that about how if you have a horizon line and it's, it's cutting me at the neck, let's say the horizon line is like there. And then I have somebody in the background to have them be the exact same height as me it would need to cut them at the neck too. So like a person here would be the same height as me. If they were taller than me, I'd put it up here. If they were shorter than me, I'd put it down here. That's a real basic idea. There's, there's other ways you could figure it out by drawing lines from the you know the horizon, line, whatever. But the point is I know a few of these tricks and I've used them, that was Fugitoid by the way from Ninja Turtles. Uh, I've used them to various amount of good success and bad success. And what he was saying was uh, taking somebody like Savage Dragon, punching out a bad guy, and he's like, I'll draw the, the hero and the villain first, or the big action, the people in the front first, and then I will draw the background around it and make it work that way. And uh, I've tried to do that, and I have a hard time making it work. I... I get what he's saying, and especially because the figures are usually the most important part, the storytelling. Somebody punching somebody in the face, that's way more important than the pictures on the wall or the tree in the background. You want it to be believable, but you don't want people to notice it. You just don't want it to be wrong. You want to have enough detail, correct enough that nobody notices it. And that's something I struggle with too, because I've come from the school of having like just action lines and nothing to like, I need to render everything perfectly so people don't think I'm lazy and everyone knows where everything is spatially. But there's a balance there that I, I fail at often, but I when I do fail, I go towards more detail than less if I have to pick. Um, which, again, is not always the right choice, but I'd rather make the wrong choice and do more work than the wrong choice and do less work because at least I don't seem lazy. And at least if I'm drawing more, I can't help but get better. So I, I choose, you know, the path of most likely I'll make a mistake this way as opposed to that way. That's a personal choice. But 
what I've tried to do his technique uh, of doing the figures, I've had, sometimes it works really well, sometimes it doesn't. Maybe it's a matter of internalizing the world's perspective more. I don't know. You know, he's clearly a more seasoned, experienced artist than I am. Uh, and, and speaking of speed, too, he, he is someone that I think, I, I, might, I might be getting this wrong, but I think he does like three or four pages a day, inks. And he makes it seem effortless because, you know, he has this sort of bombastic, cartoony style that isn't like bogged down in details. So it works really well. As a matter of fact, he's working on Spawn right now, which I haven't read in years. But I'm, I've been interested to pick up a few issues because Todd McFarlane, creator of Spawn, who also did Spider-Man back in the day, another big image, you know, big shot. It, the way they're doing it is Eric Larson is penciling it and Todd McFarlane is inking it. And the few images I've seen seem really good because Todd McFarlane is super detail-oriented. He's good at putting those little noodly details and, like, getting everything super crisp and defined and rendered. But his anatomy isn't always perfect and, you know, things like that. Whereas Eric Larson is much more, like I said, just, like, blocking in the shapes and, and doing a good composition. And so the two of them together is a really good combo of getting a solid drawing with a bunch of, like, super intricate detail. Um, so while I'm not particularly interested in the story of Spawn right now, I've been meaning to pick up uh, the, the trade where the two of them together. It might not be out yet, but just to, like, kind of absorb that art style. I'm getting off track. The point I was making with the train, the, the Stansport tube train thing, is that I was trying to do exactly what Eric Larson said. Not because he said it, but I just realized. I was drawing boots kind of like this. And then I tried to draw the background, and it was not coming out right. I was getting the ceiling and enough room for everything else. And when I stopped doing that, erased everything I'd worked on, set up a horizon line, did kind of a rough sketch of where I wanted things, and then went in and really drew the background like a set piece. And I've talked about this before. I was trained as an animator at SVI. I got my degree in animation. I studied comics a little bit, but it was I was an animator. And so the idea to me it makes way more sense to build that background in perspective. That's the hard part to do. It's correct. It's done. Then I populate it with the characters. And then I put the most important characters in front and the biggest and I move them around. And they kind of fall into perspective, at least mostly, automatically. By making it look like they look correct in that seat or look like, you know, like you almost don't have to put them in perspective if you've already drawn the whole thing. Because it's like, it's like color forms or like animation layers in the computer or like the old school acetate. I'm just laying it on top. And more often than not, that works better for me. Now, when I'm doing an action shot of, you know, the horror smashing a tank or something, the backgrounds aren't as important, then yeah, I'm going to do the character first. Most likely my perspective is going to be out of whack. And I've done this before where it's like a big action shot and I'll be like, oh, there should be a building in there for composition. And I'll just draw a corner of a building. And it's like, I don't even know how that works perspectively. That probably doesn't even make sense. But you don't really question it because it, it fills a negative space and there's a big action you're looking at. But when it's a quiet scene where people are just sitting on a subway, I feel like the perspective and the background is really important, at least to me. And if I don't do it this way, I'm going to have a hard time. So Eric Larson, good guy, good artist, good advice. Doesn't always work for me. That's the Eric Larson story. Uh, and that's going to be the end of today. This is actually a video ended up being longer than I thought, but it is a good video for today. Today being day 46. And if today is day 46, well, then that means... <laughs> We've got 54 days left. Hey there, we've got 54 kind of disappointingly slow spin days left. I thought it'd be faster. Yeah, 54. 55 dis... Uh, mm.